At first, this video was going to be about raid armor mods specifically, and then it ended up expanding a little more than that. Is this my first opinion piece? Heads up everybody, my name is Sentinel Grey and welcome to the channel. There have been a few topics that have come up recently about mods and changes to perks and this and that and whatever. To be fair, that happens a lot around the community. But I wanted to shine a little light on these as well as give an opinion on what the original topic of this video was about, i.e. the whole raid armor things. There's a, there's a lot of things in here that I think are important to at least mention so that the community knows that there should be a light shine on it. So here we go. I've seen it pop up a few times on Twitter here and there and even had small conversations about this with some of my friends. And that is the full auto trigger perk. This perk does exactly as the name suggests, which makes any weapon able to be fired in full auto without needing to pull the trigger multiple times. You can find this perk mainly on pulse rifles, scout rifles, sidearms, and some shotguns, which is practically the only places it should be used. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because it's been brought up on Twitter and everywhere else that full auto isn't really a perk that does anything major to the weapon, like at a faster firing rate or anything like that, like it used to back in D1. Currently, it's just an accessibility perk. Now, if you don't know what that means, it just means that this perk makes it easier for some people to enjoy the game. For some of you, this might not be an issue, but for others, this can be a godsend that can take a lot of pain away. And I mean physical pain, I don't mean mental pain. If you have something like Carpal Tunnel, then you know repeatedly clicking or pulling a trigger can agitate that condi condition, which can cause pain while playing. Which, I mean, come on, nobody wants that whenever they're playing a video game. Instead, I've seen a few ideas thrown around, but I feel like the best option for this might just be a toggle option in the gameplay settings. Granted, yes, everyone would have access to this, which could cause some of the gameplay to be extremely boring and monotonous and may cause problems down the road for AFK grinding, what have you. But it would help out the wider player base and accessibility. I've seen an idea thrown around to add it as a mod on weapon similar to backup mag or major spec, but I feel like if you would do that, it would be passively penalizing your players. For example, someone who might need full auto might end up getting the whole, why aren't you running boss spec on insert weapon here? You'll do way more damage. So instead of plaguing every player who needs or would appreciate full auto, let's just make it an option for all. Granted, I know there's a few things that they'd have to go over logistics wise, but I don't see it hurting that much. I don't think doing this would impact the game that heavily because like I said before, there's not any hidden effect that full auto gives other than the ability to merely hold down the trigger to fire the weapon. But you never know though. There might be some hidden thing that only Bungie knows about that might impact it. I still think it should be looked into. As I was writing this video, this next one came up and apparently it's already being addressed or already has been addressed by DMG and Chevy and stuff on Twitter. So that's good. Uh, but I feel the need to bring it up here just so that there's attention drawn to it. The traction armor mod should be made intrinsic on all leg armor pieces. If you don't know, all traction does is make your turn radius tighter while sprinting. Anyone who plays PC knows this doesn't really apply to them at all and only applies to controller players. So why not make it intrinsically added? Before, when Traction gave plus five to your mobility stat, everyone could understand as to why you would want it because, you know, plus five could be just enough to push you over the edge on a tier or two or not two, but you know what I mean. But now that that's out of the picture, why not make it like, an intrinsic thing instead of an armor mod that costs zero energy. Like I said, DMG's already on it. Team's taking a look at it. It's supposed to be in a, like going in a good direction. So that's pretty nice. Okay. So this is where the video first began before I started adding the other stuff. Raid mods. As the name suggests, you need to complete raid activities in order to earn them, and these mods are only useful inside the raids. The bad part about them is that even inside the raid, they're kind of not worth using. 
As an example, the only raid mod that I use or have a use for on a regular basis is the Taken spec mod for weapons, and that's only when my team and I are sorting Riven to death during an encounter. Even still, if your team doesn't have that mod while sorting Riven, you aren't left at that big of a disadvantage since boss spec gives you almost the same boost. Like, in essence, the mods aren't terrible. It's not like any of them are bad or the effects are so negligible that you don't even notice, but there's a few issues with them in general that I think need brought up. First is that raid mods can only be slotted into armor that comes from the specific raid. As an example, all of the Last Wish armor mods can only go in the Great Hunt armor sets. The problem with that is, since raid armor in general doesn't have the best track record for dropping at high values, and I'm talking like, you know, 60 or above, a lot of people don't have armor sets made for specific raids. And adding to that even more, if you're someone who can't always have a dedicated raid team or, you know, have a team that's raiding all the time, whatever, getting that armor could be even harder. Granted, it does seem like that the Vault of Glass armor is a much better way to get armor that is a plus 60 stat value because I know like a, a good 80% of all my armor drops from vault have been like 60 plus, which is nice, but that's only for the vault of glass raid instead of all of the raids. You get what I'm saying? The way I think they could fix this is to give you a raid mod slot on your armor once you masterwork a piece, regardless of where the armor came from. It shows that you're dedicated enough to this piece that you want to use it for your character's build. And hell, if they make mods for Grandmasters down the road, those mods can be lumped in with those as well, making it a kind of retroactive mod slot. The other problem is that raid mods cost energy to slot them in. I know to a few of you this may not be that big of an issue if you don't have any combat style mods or any mods in general on your armor. But if you do, you know how big of a pain this can be. A lot of Destiny is making builds for your characters and using those builds in more difficult content of the game to see how they work, to see how well they perform. You can't really do that if your build ends up getting neutered because this one raid armor mod takes two or three of your armor's energy. Instead, I feel like raid mods should work similar to the Aeon exotics. They cost zero energy and you can switch them out without having to put on a whole new set of armor. Doing this, I feel like the raid mods would not only get used, but would be played with in a different way so you wouldn't have to sacrifice the build you've been working on all week to be replaced by the raid build that you would want or have to use. Even still, that's going under the assumption that raid mods impacted your play and combat enough for you to care about them. But since some of them don't even do that, they rarely ever get used, like at all. Even still, to add to that, I feel some of these armor mods could get taken away entirely and be placed on weapons as intrinsic perks or even as mod options. Best example I can give is the Oracle Disruptor mods from Vault of Glass. Forgive me, but I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here because this one aggravates the hell out of me. First off, it's an armor mod that costs an energy to use per mod. Not only that, but the mod also stacks when used, so that means the bonus damage you get from a single Oracle Disruptor is so small that you might as well not have it on in the first place. The best example I have of this is the precise Oracle Disruptor mod, which affects bows, hand cannons, linear fusion rifles, scout rifles, and sniper rifles. When using Succession, an aggressive frame sniper on normal Vault of Glass, it takes two shots normally to destroy an Oracle with no mods. In order for those two shots to be cut down to one shot, you need to put four copies of precise Oracle Disruptor on your armor. That means four out of your five pieces of armor not only have to be a piece of armor from the Vault of Glass, but also have all four armor pieces have void energy specifically. All of that just to be able to pop oracles quicker. The only time I have ever had anyone use this method is when one of my friends do low man vault runs on normal, which of course makes being teleported super easy. But for everyday use, it has no place whatsoever. 
the main point I'm trying to get at here is that a lot of these mods need a rework in where and how they work. Put Oracle Disruptor mods on all of the vault weapons intrinsically and have them make enough of a difference you actually want to use them, or hell, make it a weapon mod. Let the armor mods cost no energy and give the ability to slot them on all mo masterworked armor so you don't always have to farm out certain raids that can only give your character rewards once per week. Granted, that's different with Deepstone Crypt and Vault of Glass, but before, major pain in the ass. Now that doesn't exactly mean that they are all useless or really poorly designed or anything like that. Some of these mods are incredibly useful when doing Master Vault of Glass. The best examples I can give are the Superstructure mods. All of their benefits are extremely useful and well worth the energy to use them if you have a piece of armor from Vault that you want to slot them or you have a build for extra energy, any of that. To that point, I feel like those mods were designed with Master Vault in mind, but the rest of the raid mods from the other raids were maybe made with day one in mind, but after that, they're for the most part left by the wayside. Like the general thing that happens with any raid mod is that you maybe use them day one to get the encounters done or to make the run go a little bit easier, but after that, you never really think to use them ever again. Most of the time, raids aren't so difficult that you need the benefits that some of the mods give you, like an overshield after picking up five moats in Garden of Salvation. Definitely a mod that would be super useful on day one, but after that, no one needed it. Maybe in the future, if we see more master versions of all the raids, these would prove more useful, but currently, they collect dust for a lot of people. Now, after everything I said, I'm pretty sure a lot of this can't slash couldn't happen. I don't want to be negative about it, but there's a reason why I say that. One reason is because Bungie already stated before that with the current system D2 has in place, they weren't able to make Celerity and Bottomless Grief intrinsic on Adept Weapons because the perk system for guns was already, I think how they put it, like at max capacity with what we already had for our weapons. So them intrinsically adding perks like Oracle Disruptor isn't going to be possible, but a weapon mod might be, which I'd be okay for. And if that's the case for our weapons, I can only imagine armor being the same way. Something like, our armor system can only handle so many mods on it at a time. And if we were to add the raid mods on every piece of masterworked armor with no cost, it would break our system. You get where I'm coming from? I still don't think a rework is impossible, though. And I would love it if they did one so we could better use the mods they've made for us instead of them just collecting dust in our collections. Maybe they're planning to do what they did with D1 and give us all master raid modes in, you know, place of D1's challenger mode with slightly more slash better rewards. That way the raid perks would be used rather than their current state of... That's all speculation though, of course. If you agree with me though, or have a better idea for anything that I discussed, please be sure to put it down in the comments below. I would actually love to hear multiple perspectives on some of this. And if you like the video, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more. If you want to talk to me about this live, you can catch me on Twitch every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll have a link for my channel down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you all next time. And remember, Keep your heads up and be kind to each other. Bye now.